you can get a job offer a year before yes. you graduate. If you want to find mm-hmm. a spot to work on campus, go to Career Services. They are- Big employers in this country run leadership programs. They run graduate training programs, which are just specifically designed for new level people. Um, instead, people are looking. All right, welcome, welcome, welcome back to this episode of the How to Get a Job podcast. Today, I have an amazing guest. We're going to be talking about how you as an international student with a STEM major can get a job before you graduate. And to do that, I have Prasha Dutra with us today, and she is a confidence coach, TEDx speaker, and a woman in STEM advocate. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Daniel? I'm doing excellent. I've always been looking forward to this conversation uh, as you know, we're both really passionate about helping international STEM students uh, get amazing careers. And I wanted to talk about how they can get those careers before they graduate. And um, the reason why I say that is because I feel like a lot of times, and this is my what I've noticed from a lot of our clients, is that they wait until they graduate to start looking for the job when they can be looking for the job, I would even say over a year in advance. But uh, tell me, uh, a li- why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're so passionate about this topic as well? For sure. So um, thank you for the introduction and thanks for having me here. Um, I moved to the U.S. in 2012 and since then I've grown uh, my career, my personal life and now even my business. So it has been a really wonderful decade. Uh, But I moved here for my master's degree and I graduated from UT Arlington with a master's in mechanical engineering. And the reason I moved here was because in 2011, I came to America for a competition and I really liked it here and I just wanted to come back. So eight months later, I was back um, and I went to the same school as Kalpana Chawla, who was an astronaut, actually the first woman astronaut from India to go to the space station. And she went to UT Arlington. So I went for the aerospace program program but I switched majors because I realized you can't get a job in aerospace Mm -hmm. as an immigrant because of your uh, visa status so I knew it was very important for me to make money and you know pay off my loans and stuff so I was very like you know I was very resourceful at that time that you know I was paying attention to as soon as I entered um, the the college I was paying attention to who's getting a job who's not getting a job like what's what's the future you know I don't want to waste too much time figuring that out so That's kind of where it all started. And I spent about eight years in corporate America, growing in the ladder and doing a lot of different roles in manufacturing. So I've worked in heavy manufacturing, making wire and cable. And then in 2021, I left my job to to coach primarily immigrant women in STEM to become more confident, get better jobs, start their side hustles, and just do anything that they want to do uh, without feeling like they're behind or they don't have the support. So that's kind of what I do. I also have a podcast called Her STEM Stories. So just like you, I was very passionate about bringing these stories to the surface and talking to STEM women. And the reason I started, Daniel, was because I was reading this book called Lean In. And I was going online and I was looking up these stats that there's so less women in STEM, less women in STEM, less women in STEM. But when I went to work, I had a different reality. My whole team was actually women. And I was like, wait, nobody's talking about this. Like, you know, we are here. Like, I, I don't care if we are less, but I would rather amplify our stories. And that way we can actually close the gap mm-hmm. versus constantly focusing on the gap. And that frustrated me. Um, and that's why I interviewed over 150 women in STEM. And that's kind of what led me to my TEDx as well, is this passion to bring these stories, you know, where we just all have incredible stories and we don't need to be defined by that number, which is so small that, you know, everybody's focused on that. So that's kind of the gist of the last 10 years. <laughs> no, I, I love it. I love the story. And, and I, I love the fact that you realize to change your major um, before you graduated, because I've worked and I say I worked, I actually I, I, it's really hard because if, it, if somebody comes uh, within uh, with if some degrees that are really hard to get a job because the only job people that hire in the aerospace is defense contractors or not, and you need to have be a U.S. citizen to be even be able to get hired there. I think you know it's really heartbreaking because they come to me after they've graduated and no one told them that throughout the whole career. Because I understand their professors are not thinking about that. Like their professors didn't have to go through that. So they're not thinking that's an even an issue. Uh, they're just seeing how talented you are. And they could probably say, hey, you're going to have a great career. Like, you know, 
um, SpaceX, Lockheed, you know, Raytheon, all these companies, Boeing, um, will, will, will love to hire you, but then they don't realize that it's not even possible. It doesn't matter if you're the best in the class. And so the fact that you were able to uh, realize that early on, uh, it, it's, it's, it's like kudos to you because that's, I, I've seen that story way too many times and it's really heartbreaking. Or even when people study business or they study a non-STEM major and they realize that like, um, I can't get a job because no one's going to hire me because I only have one year of OPT and no company wants to hire you for just one year because odds of you get into H1B lottery is slim to none. And even if you get selected, trying to justify why giving you the job, um, your application might not even get approved if you got selected. So, um, I, I, I think that that's really great. And the, so it seems like you've been really proactive about this. So I want to talk a little bit more about like how early can someone start looking for a job and what would you suggest that career or that strategies look like when you're still a student versus when you have already graduated? Yeah. Um, so I think the biggest thing, like you said, it's being proactive, right? Like I think a lot of immigrants and I've seen this, you know, a lot in the Indian community myself is that we have heard mentality when we come here, right? Like we're scared. We want to be with our group. We were, we don't want to fight with anybody and we're just following everybody. Like yeah. whatever everybody's doing, we're doing that. Like if people are doing internships, we're doing internships. If yeah. people are doing jobs at a motel, we're doing jobs at a motel, like whatever everybody's doing. And so early on, I noticed this pattern, like I was like, this is unhealthy because you know, I need to advocate for my own career. Nobody is here for each other, right? Like it's so easy to get lost in that, um, that oh, my friends, my circles, so I think the first thing people need to do is like spend some time away from that group, even if it's one hour a day in a library or somewhere, just focusing on what you want and instead of just following everybody and just like forgetting about why you actually came to, came to America, like what yeah. is your end goal? And so you can start as early as you arrive here because you want to make sure that you, adapt to the culture but also understand some of these regulations talk to some seniors right like once a week like talk to some people who graduated go you know try to connect with alumni and see what worked for them um i have a lot of a uh, few of my clients from ut arlington who actually did this work right like before they graduated they messaged me they said can i get on a call with you and i really appreciated that because these people are taking proactive action so i think you can start as soon as you get here you need to understand the rules and regulations you know, get a little educated on stuff more than listening to stories. So when I got to UT Arlington, everybody said, oh, it's a safe school. You're not going to get a job. It's very hard. Like, you know, electronics is a good department there. And then mechanical people never get a job. Like they have to move to IT consultancies. And if I just listened to them and didn't do my own research, then I would not get anywhere. And that happened to a lot of my friends as well. But I was very focused on like, no, no, no. I have certain goals and I have certain things that I want to accomplish. and I want to be proactive about it. You know, and I want to do these studies. Like, I want to understand how STEM OPT works and how H one B works, and like, you know, what are the options in the manufacturing industry. But I had to do that work. You know, so for that, you have to get away from your friends a little bit, and find that one hour, you know, one or two hours a week to just do your own research, so that you don't get caught up in a lot of these limiting beliefs and things that people talk about just of anecdotes and experiences, which is not always the truth. You know, it's something I had to identify really early on because there is a lot of negativity, you know, in very immigrant heavy schools where there's a lot of immigrants and you're just all scared and worried and everybody's, you know, kind of in a weird mindset at that time. So I do think that you can start as soon as you get here, but make sure you are being more diligent and more, you know, um, like educating yourself on it through right resources, not just stories and anecdotes from your friends. Yeah. And I, I would even say, like, I think you made a really good point. It's like, I, I notice that like international students stay together, like they group together. And so like double down on like saying like, try to join the student organization without them. Like, I know like it's, it's super feels really safe and comfortable to just, oh, do you guys want to go with me to this meeting? No, go by yourself, build your own circle. I'm not saying you don't, you, you, can, you have to lose them as friends. That's not true. Like not at all. You, they can still be your roommates. They can, you can still hang out with them 90% of the time, but as the idea of like branching out and networking on yourself, I would even say as soon as you get, and as soon as you're listening or you or you get on campus, it's like plan it out. Okay. You might not be able to, to work right away. You might have to wait two semesters. Like under, like it's really important that you're educated at, uh, on what the rules are and, and, and around the immigration status that you have. 
and say, okay, when is the soonest that I can work on campus? When is the soonest that I could do an internship? When is fall recruitment work? And understand that if you're here for two years for, for a master's degree, right? Like summer internship is important. And then you can get a job offer a year before you yes. graduate. A year, a year before you yeah. graduate, mm-hmm. which means you think about all the stress that you relieve. If you can have, like, let's say you start fall 2023 and you graduate May 2025. So fall 2023, that I know it's your first semester in America, but that fall semester, it's all about getting a summer internship for 2024, right? So you have to say, okay, what is the career fair at my school? Let's put that on the calendar. What companies are going? Let's research those companies. I would join student organizations. Right. I would look at working on campus and I would even try working on campus, particularly in career services. Like if you want to find a spot to work on campus, go to career services. They they hire they, they hire students to work and and go to career services and volunteer. Right. Getting to know their director of career services that has a relationship with all these employers that can send your resume to the right person is going to guarantee you have an internship in the summer. Then your goal in that summer is to turn that internship into a full-time offer. How do you do that? By asking, how do I, what do I need to do? Like to get a job here, right? Cause trust me, they're not doing an internship because they want free labor or cheap labor, right? They want to make, they're like, they want to make sure that they interview you for those 10, 12 weeks that you're doing an internship and they want to offer you. And then in a best case scenario, you'll have a job offer in August. In August, your last two semesters, you can actually enjoy. Yes. Yes. And that's pretty much very similar to my journey, right? Like, so I didn't get an internship because mechanical engineering, and and I had changed my degree the same semester, but I was so much focused on getting that full-time job. So I got a research assistant job at the lab. I mean, I begged this professor. I sat outside his lab for nights after nights after nights till he caught me. And I'm like, I'll do anything. Like, I will like really like work my ass off. Like, just give me the job. And I got it and um, I got full paid in, you know, uh, like yeah. $1,500 a month. I got my tuition into um, in-state and it was fantastic. So I, my focus was that, which is similar to what you would get through internships also yeah. sometimes. But anyways, like that led to then I was I was uh, comfortable and confident that I have the money. I don't need to worry about that. Now I can focus on the job. And to your point, you can get a job literally eight months. I got it. I got the offer letter eight months before I graduated. So yeah, basically August of my uh, graduation, like August of 2013 is when I started looking for jobs. And I did exactly what you just said. I went to the career fair and I researched every single employer in that research fair. And I said, I'm not going to Microsoft. I'm not going to Apple. I'm not going to any of these people because the lines were so long, Daniel, that people wasted the entire day standing yeah. there. And I went to these really great employers who are also giant MNCs, researched everything about them, learned some numbers about them, right? Like how big is their business? They they had just invested like hundred million dollars in expanding to other countries they had invested you know another hundred million in aluminum uh, mm. development aluminum cable development and i had an aluminum background and i'm like pulling all that together and all i did then and that in fair is i only went to two companies and i spend most time with them so i spoke to the guy and after that i was just around the job fair and i was waiting for the booth to get empty and then I went back again and I built a rapport and I was like I would love to stay in touch and da 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 and it was just great and so much so that I forgot to actually apply for the job after it I was like oh I was just so happy with just this much I'm like this is great then they call me they actually call me the last day when it was time to apply and I hadn't applied the HR from their main office called me and said we got really great feedback from our person at the job fair and you haven't applied can you please apply so you don't miss the deadline I'm like Okay. And then I ran to the job, you know, to the career services and finished my application, got interviewed on campus. Um, And that's kind of how I actually got interviewed. So ahead of time, they actually flew me to Indianapolis and did two days of interviews. And it was fantastic. I mean, just the whole, um, like just little bit of work and everybody was laughing at me. I know my friends were laughing at me. Why are you doing this? You are not even qualified. You bought a suit for this. Are you crazy? Like, you should not do this. And I'm like, I will have a job before I graduate. Like, this is going to happen. <laughs> like, I need this so bad. And I'm going to do everything in my power. And then if I don't get it, 
at least I prepared and at least I did a lot of, you know, this, you this leg work, which you can use for other stuff too. Yeah, exactly. I, I, exactly. So here's what's interesting. I was a person on the other side of the table as career first. I ran a career fair. I, so I went to the University of Central Florida and it's UCF. And at that time, UCF was not a PepsiCo core school. So I got involved in campus recruitment. I don't think a lot of people in the audience, like listening to this actually even know how I got started in career in, in this career space. I started, uh, what, I started helping my friends get into PepsiCo. And then my boss was like, hey, like you have an eye for talent. Like you should get involved in campus recruitment. And so at that time, the HR team didn't go to UCF because they didn't have the resources to do it or they didn't have somebody to go. I said, hey, I'll go, right? I have a good relationship with career services. Um, as long as you guys pay for the booth, like I'll man it. I'll, 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 you know, that's not my job. I'm in this leadership development training program. Long story short, I started bringing in so many people from PepsiCo that ultimately got hired to this program that PepsiCo had to make UCF a core school. So I was, by that time, I had all the relationships on campus. We know with career services, with the College of Business, uh, um, and all the student organizations. So I was the one going on campus doing the info session, right? I was the one that was the table who determined who got the interview or not. I was the one doing on-campus interviews the next day after the career fair. And um, and I, if there was an internship, there was only one interview. And it was with me and someone else. It, but it was the same time. It was like, it was a two people interview, 30 minutes. At the end of the day, we'll interview, you know, we'll, we'll interview probably like 10, 15 people in one day with like back-to-back -back interviews. And then we'll calibrate and then we'll decide who we, who, who we move on to the final round. If it was a full-time job, which again, we would take them to, we'll fly them to Atlanta to meet the directors and the vice presidents, like, you know, like a full day. And if it was an internship, my boss was like, just to, I, if you think they're good, go ahead, bring them in because we'll have 10 weeks to determine if they're a good fit or not. And so everything that you're saying, it's amazing because as someone that's another side of the table, you have to understand like these people are humans. Like these people care, have feelings, have jobs. And so when I see a student that in, in the PepsiCo line was massive all the time, it was like, because Microsoft and Google weren't coming to my school. And so we were like the largest company at UCF, right? Now a lot of, now a lot of these companies go there. So we always had a line. So I was the one like talking to talking and I would tell you 99%, like 99% like of people that walked up to me were like, Hey, I'm Daniel, what are you hiring for? And so to have someone come in and say, hey, I'm Daniel, I know that you're hiring for a leadership development program and you're looking for A, B, and C, and here's how I have A, B, and C, and here's my resume that has PepsiCo's name on the subject line. I was like, automatic interview, like automatic interview. Like exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think people people are so obsessed with and I think job seekers now have to change their mindset, whether you're doing it in school or after you have to care for other people, you have to care for the company, you have to care for what they do. Otherwise, why would I care? Like it's so it's so it's so ingenuine and it's so selfish and it's so like it, it rubs off so wrong when you're just all about you. And you're like, help me find a job or I get these weird messages on LinkedIn also from students and I'm like, I just feel like coaching you right now because this is going to cost you a career. You know, yep. this is going to cost you money. This is going to cost you reputation that you can't build again. Like yep. if you've sent me a weird message and I don't care who you become in like five years, I would always remember you for that weird message that you did not take the time to research me or, or put it in paper properly. So I actually got hired for uh, the leadership program. So I got hired for the graduate uh, engineering program, which they used to call engineering um so the title was engineering training, uh, engineering training program. So which was basically a leadership program. And I tell people all the time that students are not utilizing this opportunity. All big employers in this country run leadership programs. Mm -hmm. They run graduate training programs, which are just specifically designed for new level people. Um, instead, people are looking at all these weird jobs that need experience or whatever. And I'm like, if you go through graduate training program, then you have high visibility in the organization. I got promotions way faster than anybody else. I got opportunities to go abroad and study. I got 
uh, opportunities to do pocket MBA. And I got the biggest projects in the company, all because I was coming from that high talent, high visibility program that groomed me. It made me, they made me, they made us travel every eight months. I know PepsiCo does something similar too. A lot of companies do where they travel, they show them different plans, they show you the process. And these people are who end up being VPs and executives. In fact, when I left, I was the group director for diversity and inclusion. Actually, they were pushing me into the executive jobs for diversity inclusion. If I stayed, I think in 10 years, I would have made it um, to the executive suite. But this is how they groom you. This is this solves all your problems for like next 20 years. You know, if you can get in that program. And my, once I got in and I saw my uh, other peers struggle, you know, to get promoted, to get they didn't know anybody you know I had this vast network of VPs and executives who knew me I I was always uh, you know they were scouting me for different roles like it was just such a great place to be of course you have to prove your talent I had to give very many interviews and talk to many very many people to get selected but if you really believe that you have the talent this is the best way to succeed in corporate America so get inside a graduate training program and I promise you companies like GE Volvo um Procter & Gamble, um, the company I work for, Prismian Group, tons and tons of companies run really great programs and they allow for relaxation of sponsorship as well because this program is so focused on talent yeah. that they wave off a lot of those requirements and say, you know what, for this person, if you can find me the next star for our company, yeah. I'll pay anything. I mean, one of my, yeah, one of my persons who was actually in that group is on his way to probably CEO level, you know, like yeah. it's, it's a really, really great program. It's interesting. And, and, and I, and I'll even say from like, you know, like sharing what I learned at the PepsiCo side of it, it's like every company, you're only as good as your people. And it always comes down to the bottleneck is leadership and the amount of leaders we can do So all these companies. It doesn't matter if you are a STEM major or not, all, it's, all these companies are hiring all these po college programs to groom them to be the future leaders of the company. Because, okay, you think about a company like PepsiCo, right? And if, if you go from the, the most lower junior level all the way to the CEO, there's probably, I don't know, 50, 50 steps. If you think about the corporate ladder, it's like there's so many levels to this massive companies that even if you get promoted every two years, you won't be able to get to the CEO by the time you turn 100, right? Like you, you won't be able to get there. So the only way to be able to build and groom a CEO or a senior leader or a director is through these leadership programs that give you access to critical experience that you wouldn't get anywhere else. And so they do that from those college programs and they're trying to get the cream of the crop and they're trying to develop you and promote you so much faster so that you can one day have the experience to be able to run the company or run a division or a department of this company. And so you're so right because they're going to be willing to sponsor you. They're going to be willing to do anything to try to keep you and develop you and invest in you. And people overlook those, 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 those pro programs. And I think the reason is because the only way to get into those programs, is if you're proactive, like those roles are not open right now. Yes. A year ago. They're not. They're not <laughs> yes. Those, a year those ahead. People got offers a year ago, right? Yeah, you're right. A year ago. Yeah. Uh, and so. If you already graduated, I, you know, I would say you kind of missed the boat. It's hard because that, those programs, if you've been, if you've graduated more than a year ago in PepsiCo, you can't, you, you don't qualify. You can't apply. You can't apply for exactly. those roles. You have to be a student to apply <laughs> for those roles. And so if you have already graduated and this is probably really frustrating, just pass this message along to someone who's not, to someone that, that, that a junior, uh, uh, somebody that, that's below you or that you met in school that you still talk to. But if you're still in school or you're listening because you're just about to start and you're about to come to America, or even if you're a sophomore or a freshman in college, trust me, this is like the most, the safest and best route that I can ever suggest. Them. The best. Yeah. I mean, all your American dreams will come true so much faster. And not only that, but you'll have fun. I think that was the biggest thing, yeah. Daniel, is that, um, when you're an immigrant, there is very less opportunity to have fun. But if you can actually land in a career where you feel seen, heard, important, uh, where you feel like you bring something to the table. And they're, like you said, because so much is on the line, they are very, very intentional with graduate trainees. Yeah. Like 
it, they, we were treated like royalty wherever we went whoever we spoke to like it was just a big deal that oh my god a etp is coming like it was just a very big deal and our the people who designed this program in, in the company were actually xge and they were leadership program through ge so they were working on you know they were building something very similar and legacy like ge and so it was amazing i mean it's yeah. the best place to learn leadership and again, to me, it, I credit all of that to my success now as an entrepreneur is like they groomed me. They taught me how to talk to people. They taught me how to conduct myself and how to, you know, even embrace this culture by sending me to like small towns, you know, where our plants are and, you know, having to solve some big problems yeah. early on. And so I could leave my job seven years um, later which somebody would have to take like 20 years to like even learn some of these things because they're not taught. And we were given access to the best trainings in the world to like actually go and do it. Uh, you know, and even the peers that you're surrounded, it's just a fantastic life school. Like I think if you can get in and it's very, very, very elite, like, no, you, you just can't like show up and be like, yeah, because I have all these degrees. No, no, no. You gotta be street smart. You gotta be, you gotta be focused on that. You read books and you consume good content and you're able to have a good conversation. And like, you know, there's a lot of layers to how these people are selected. They're not selected based on their acumen or their academics. They're selected because they're overall you know, will be a fit to the culture of the company. That's why I never left. You know, I never looked for jobs. I never looked for another company because I was so valued. You know, why would I leave? And I think even that time they had told me, will you accept our offer? I said, I will if you give me H1. And they said, mm, I don't, we don't know how all of that works, but we'll figure it out. And I'm like, oh, okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you just never know. So I think you can sell yourself to an employer by just being proactive and showing yeah. your best skills, you know? So, so, um, as we wrap up, I know that you have an amazing Ted talk out there. I would love for you to share a little bit more about what the Ted talk, uh, TEDx is all about. And also how can individuals listening to this podcast that want to learn more about you and work with you can, can do so. I love it. Um, so my TEDx is all about finding relatable role models and, and I know it's titled like why women leave STEM, uh, but it's very much connected to the solution of like why you, what you can do to stay. And what helped me stay was letting go of my role model of Kalpana Chawla, which was so big and so larger than life and actually finding women in my own organization who were ahead of me or immigrants who were ahead of me and tracing their path and asking them questions as to how did they get there. So my suggestion is, and in that TEDx, I talk more about the exact framework you can use to find your relatable role models and grow in STEM. And this way, what will happen is you'll stay in STEM and you'll benefit from, you know, all that STEM has to offer. So please check it out. It's a really cool talk. It's only nine minutes, so it won't take too long. Um, and then where can you find me and how you can learn more about me? So you can follow me on LinkedIn or Instagram at Prasha Dutra. And then you can also look up prashadutra.com. Uh, if you just Google me, a lot of stuff should come up about me. And then I coach women in STEM, mostly immigrants who are trying to get promoted, finding new jobs, um, or trying to start the, start the new side hustles. Whatever's next for you, I help you figure that out and then help you accomplish it uh, through my 90-day program. So that's kind of what I do. Uh, and preferably, I work with people who are mostly working right now. And if you're a student, you know, I would be happy to chat with you and just give you some wisdom that I could I could offer. I love it. Love it. Amazing. Uh, thank you so much for coming. This has been great. I'm going to put all the links in the show notes, even a link to your TED talk uh, here in the show notes. So for all the audience to listen, for all the audience uh, listening with uh, here today, thank you so much. If you like this episode, please make sure you like and subscribe. And thank you guys for always supporting the episode. Have a great day and talk to you guys later.